Good evening, I'm Tristina Gray with a CTV News Update. Senator Ben Cardin tours the COVID vaccination site at the Prince George's Sports and Learning Complex. This morning's tour comes as a final push to vaccinate the American public takes place nationally. So far, more than 25,000 doses have been given at the complex. Well, we know we're going to be transitioning more to outreach to get people vaccinated, to go where they live, to go to their community. And we're all prepared to do everything we can to make sure we get the maximum number of people vaccinated. Cardin says there is an urgent need to meet President Biden's goal to get the maximum number of Americans vaccinated by July 4th. Meanwhile, One Prince George's zip code 20783 has the lowest COVID-19 vaccination rate in the entire state. That's why two lawmakers, Delegate Jocelyn Pena Melnick and Denny Tavares, are sponsoring a special vaccination clinic this weekend at Hyattsville Church. The clinic will give free Pfizer shots for anyone over 12. No insurance needed. There will also be free health screenings, prepared meals, and family fun, including raffles and prizes. Most essential workers, which are black and brown people, are working sometimes two jobs. They work on Saturdays, and most of these vaccines have been Monday through Fridays. And it's tough when people work. So on a Sunday, a window like that, and trust me, it's tough from one to seven to be there waiting. And I'm praying that people come. I want to make it comfortable for people. I hope they come because I, I feel that within that window, perhaps people come home from work or come after church. I just hope people do. We're really trying. We're trying to think outside the box and go where people are and to select a schedule that works for people. You know, if we have to go to the supermarkets, the soccer fields, the churches, we will do it. The event will be held from 1 to 7 p.m. at St. Matthew's Episcopal Church. The address is 5901 36th Avenue in Hyattsville. Registration is not required, but strongly encouraged. Call or text 240-487-9453 to sign up. In other news, here are the latest COVID-19 numbers for Maryland. The state has confirmed 145 new cases since yesterday. 22 of those are in Prince George's County. The positivity rate continues to ease downward. It is now at 1.37%. Three Marylanders have succumbed to the disease over the past 24 hours. There's good news on the job front. Today, the U.S. economy added nearly 560,000 new jobs in May. The gains were driven by hiring in the restaurant and food service sector. Now, that sector added 186,000 new positions. The unemployment rate is now below 6% for the first time since the pandemic hit. The first 14 months, first time, first time in 14 months, we saw the largest decline in the number of long-term unemployed more in more than an entire decade in the last 10 years. Long-term unemployment dropped by the second largest amount ever recorded. The unemployment rate in April was 6.1%. A hospitality union is speaking out against Governor Hogan and his decision to opt out of enhanced federal unemployment benefits. Unite Here Local 25 represents about 7,200 hospitality workers in Maryland, Virginia, and the district. Officials say despite Maryland's reopening efforts, about 85% of their members are still out of work. Union spokesperson Samuel Epps says Hogan's decision hurts women. Because of not going to work, the unemployment benefits help them with their mortgage, rent assistance. Um, many of them are at home now taking care of children. So even with this, there and people wanting them to go back to work, they still had to figure out child care, transportation needs. Comptroller Peter Franshaw is backing the union in its fight for enhanced unemployment benefits. Meanwhile, a Prince George's community activist and pastor is suing the state over unemployment benefits. Dr. Anita Nave says she did receive a few thousand dollars last year, but says her benefits were cut off and she's not sure why. Naves also says the Division of Unemployment Insurance told her that her benefits would resume, but adds she's still waiting. You know, I, I, I've been able to eat. However, you know, I have mortgage that's due, um, other bills that are due, um, money that I had saved is being constantly chipped away. 
um, because I've been a working person just about all of my life. So I'm not asking for anything as a handout. This is what is due to myself and many other people. Naves is critical of Governor Larry Hogan's recent move to cut off the federal supplemental unemployment benefits, which she says people still need. You're watching CTV News. I'm Tracina Gray, back in a moment. As the Biden administration is urging corporate America to take immediate steps to prepare for ransomware attacks, a Prince George's cybersecurity company says we will see an uptick in ransomware activity. Dr. Caleb Charles runs his cybersecurity website, Security Orb. Charles points to recent attacks at JBS Meats, the massive colonial pipeline company hack, and the New York City subway, and says there will be more incidents. What we're finding is that a lot of these companies and individuals are actually paying the ransom. And what that has turned the ransomware industry into is a business now. Uh, many organizations, black hat attacker organizations that are running these ransomware services are finding that it's a profitable business. And as these ransomware uh, ransoms are being paid, uh, they're creating better tools, um, increasing the sophistication of their attacks and going after higher targets. Charles says individuals are also susceptible to cyber attacks. On Monday, Dr. Charles will have tips on how to protect your computer. More than 18,000 Americans have died from gun violence this year. According to the Gun Violence Archive, to bring more attention to this issue, the Maryland chapter of Moms Demand Action is hosting several events this weekend. One of the events includes a book signing for Tyrese McAllister on Sunday. McAllister wrote a children's novel called Is My Lollipop in Heaven? She wrote it after losing her daughter to gun violence in 2017. My daughters, both of my daughters were home from college on spring break. Um, they were hanging out with some friends in Washington, D.C. Um, they were doing a music video and they had wrapped the music video up. They were getting in the cars to um, go celebrate the uh, finishing or the completion of the video and um, someone started shooting far off in the distance. The events are part of Wear Orange Weekend. For more information, you can visit momsdemandaction.org. Meanwhile, Senator Chris Van Hollen says he wants to find alternative ways for police to respond to crisis situations. Van Hollen met this morning with representatives Karen Bass from California. They both say they plan to reintroduce the Community-Based Response Act next week. The legislation would provide about $1 million a year for five years to cities and jurisdictions to help expand community-based responses to mental health issues. Holland says about half of all individuals killed by police have had a disability. In other news, two Prince George's police officers have been suspended. A third is on administrative leave following an incident with a dog. It happened Wednesday night at about 7.30 on the 6900 block of Allison Street in Hyattsville. Police were called to the area on the report of a biting attack by two dogs. Investigators say it was while police were in an apartment looking for the animals that one of the dogs approached and police opened fire, striking it. A third officer used his taser. The dog was euthanized. Police are asking anyone who may have additional information to call Internal Affairs at 301-516-5714. In other news, a Baltimore police officer has been indicted on child porn and obstruction of justice charges. Officials say 51-year-old Donald Hildebrandt was involved in the production and possession of child pornography. Hildebrandt works as a SWAT officer with the Baltimore City Police Department. He has been suspended without pay. Meanwhile, a familiar face is going to be the next vice president of the Maryland State Educators Association. Teresa Dudley's post as the president of the Prince George's Teachers Union will end on July 31st. Then, in August, she will step into her new role at the MSEA. Dudley says she's humbled to take on this new job. She says she plans to create a school-to-teacher pipeline to address the staffing issues in the state. The other thing that I am working on is um, racial and social justice and the institutional racism that exists 
um, for our students, for our educators, and within MSEA and some of the policies and procedures that we have. Um, I'm working on a action strategy for racial and social justice. Dudley's position as vice president starts on August 1st. And we'll have more news in a moment. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Mobile grocery trucks may soon be available in Prince George's. The County Council this week adopted a measure authorizing mobile vendors to sell grocery products. Officials say it'll expand healthy food options in communities with limited access to food stores. Council Chair Calvin Hawkins says mobile grocery trucks will give residents options to buy fresh fruit, vegetables and other foods close to home. Members of the media get a behind the scenes look at the new state of the art hospital in Largo. The University of Maryland Capital Regional Medical Center will provide improved access to primary and ambulatory care services, as well as serve critically ill patients. CTV got a tour of the facility while construction was going on. Uh, we have five beds that are dedicated to pediatric patients. And um, this is a, a new part of our emergency services. Uh, four of the beds are for um, observation of pediatric patients. We actually have a, this bed here is, uh, can be used for a short stay of pediatric patients. The medical center will have an entire floor dedicated to heart and vascular care. It will also be home to a new maternity center, high-tech operating rooms, and critical care units. The hospital is scheduled to open next Saturday, June 12th. And the city of Greenbelt is lending a helping hand to new parents. Prior to the pandemic, the city's nursery project, along with the Greater D.C. Diaper Bank, provided wellness checkups for toddlers and mothers in their third trimester. Diapers and formula were also provided to new moms. However, the pandemic and social distance guidelines forced the program to focus on diaper delivery to families in need. Distribution is now every third Thursday of each month. Typically, an average of 40 families apply to the program um, for Greenbelt residents. We do know that there are more um, families in need. We decided to have a drive through event, so parents will need to, you know, as soon as they get the application, fill it out. It's reviewed so that we make sure that it is a Greenbelt resident. Um, during the event, they need to provide the child's birth certificate whether it's of one child or however many children they're applying for, um, and then also a valid identification. The next distribution date is set for Thursday, June 17th. Parents must be Greenbelt residents and must register to receive the baby essentials like diapers and wipes. For more information, visit greenbeltmd.gov. A new Maryland gubernatorial political poll favors Rashern Baker. Former Prince George's County Executive Baker leads the field, followed by State Comptroller Peter Franshaw. However, 40% of voters are still undecided. Currently, there are nine Democrats in the race to succeed Governor Larry Hogan. Let's get a quick check on our three-day weather forecast. Tonight, mostly clear with a low around 65. Saturday, sunny with a high near 91 and a low around 68. Sunday and Monday, sunny with daytime highs around 93 with lows in the 70s. And now for the community calendar. Sunday, June 6 is the 34th annual National Cancer Survivors Day. Bring your loved ones out to a celebration honoring cancer survivors, as well as to raise awareness. This is My Moment takes place this Sunday from 1 p.m. until 3 p.m. You can enjoy music, inspiring messages, giveaways, and more. For registration and more information, you can visit eventbrite.com and search for This Is My Moment, National Cancer Survivors Day Celebration. And that wraps up our CTV News Update. I'm Tracina Gray. Good night.